Hey friends, today we're gonna discuss uh, about unwrapping and in Houdini. Um, when I first started trying uh, unwrapping Houdini, it was uh, overwhelming because if I press here UV, you see so many things and okay, I figured out the workflow, but at first I was super confused and I was pressing things here and there. And let me show you um, uh, some some ways of going about that. So first thing I'm gonna do is uh, this auto UV uh, thing, right? So if I press this one and enable it, you see it does this automatic kind of unwrapping and you can play here with your sliders, etc. But okay, to be honest, this reminds me of um, C4D, previous versions, uh, before the unwrap or overhaul, that everything was so convoluted and so many things here, angle-based, ABS, yeah, yeah, whatever, whatever. I couldn't find a nice uh, use for this one, but if that suits you, su uh, yeah, whatever floats your boat, let's say. So another thing, uh, sorry about that. Uh, merge small islands can help with uh, merging some artifacts and yeah, right? You see, there we go. Maybe you want to cut something like this or something like this, etc, etc. Auto UVs. Unwrap, UV unwrap is another node that does something different. Projects, I think, from many sides and does again some automatic UVing. Here is some spacing the padding, let's say, of your of your islands, and uh, here are how many cuts it's gonna do, four or eight, eight are too many cuts, or four are less, something like this. Again, not optimal, right? Uh, it has many nodes that do many operations, as I said, you're gonna get super lost, so I'm gonna show you my preferred way of doing things. So, uh, while sometimes this can be handy, uh, in general, I don't tend to use automatic unwrapping overall. So I'm going to delete this and I'm going to select some uh, here in the viewport. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to select my, grab my selection tool and grab my, you see here, my edges, right? And let's do, let's click here, right? And shift A, with shift A, uh, Houdini does uh, loop selection. So here is one loop. Here is, I'm gonna uh, do some sims, right? So let's say these are the sims that I want. Uh, by pressing tab, I'm gonna, inside the viewport, I'm gonna select group in order for automatically uh, my group to be assigned on the correct group type and contain all the edges. This happens if, if when you select something in, in your viewport, you tab and group in here. So now I have the selection, let's call this one Sims, right? And let's go and add a UV flatten node, right? So uh, selecting the UV flatten, it does this automatic projection or whatever. And it has here a selection for Sims. So if we select the Sims, nice, you see that it cut exactly where our seams are. But the problem is uh, with this uh, flattening thing, they do not align correct inside the uh, UDIM here, right? So we're gonna use another node for that, which is called UV layout. And what UV layout is, is a node that does exactly that, it, it packs things. So if I enable it by default, boom, it found this space and did the unwrapping for us really, really nicely. And in the UV layout, uh, it has tons of options again. Um, what I found that I play sometimes is these rotations here. So maybe rotate them like this or like this or 45 or I, I, I don't really know, to be honest. <laughs> um, no rotations. 180 works in this case, right? So. This is the way that I prefer doing my UVs, okay? And um, let's say um, another another node, uh, sorry, that can be uh, useful in our case is um, UV. Uh, how's it called? Uh, uh, UV view visualize right so with uv visualize when i select that um 
it has this bug, I think, which I have to mess a bit with the texture tiling. But once I play with the texture tiling, maybe I want to see uh, more or less uh, from more or less uh, scale of the squares because sometimes this helps me uh, see my UVs uh, better, right? So yeah, this is the default way of doing things in Houdini. And let me show you. Uh, I'm gonna jump into Cinema 4D actually now to show you my preferred way of, of doing UVs. So here in Cinema I have a torus, right? And I don't do one wrap in Cinema, although it's easier uh, than the past. I tend to, and this is a simple object actually, but when I have more complex things and I wanna do unwrap, I don't use the Cinema 4D tools. What I use though is uh, a standalone con called Rhizome or Rhizome, not sure about the naming. Uh, and um, I do my unwrapping there. In order to do that, you need to grab your object, export it as an OBJ, import it in Rhizom because it's a standalone application, do your seams there, uh, save it, export it back in C4D. It's, it sounds tedious, right? Therefore, uh, a, a thing called uh, Bridge for Rhizom exists for Cinema 4D. And uh, here in extensions, where you see Rhizom, let me drop this menu out, it has these options. So if I make my torus editable, and let's delete the UV tag, and it has this export to Rhizom UV. So by pressing that, automatically uh, exports the object as FBX or OBJ, I don't know, brings it in here, and let's do some very basic operations here, right? So Rhizom is very, very nice, uh, and um, the way it works is by default it has edges as mode, which is the most helpful one. And if you double click an edge, creates a selection. And let's double click this shift, double click another one, and we have two selections, right? So pressing C, it turns them orange. And if if we press now U, while while we hover here, not here, because this is the mouse is uh, screen sensitive. So because I had it here, it unwrapped only the top object. And if I want the second object, I can press it here as well. And now I have both objects unwrapped. But if if I undo and I have my mouse here in an empty area and press U, it automatically unwraps everything. And as you see, they disappeared. But if I press with my mouse here, press F, I'm framing my uh, U dim and these are my objects. And from here, you know, I can keep adding cuts, like let's say, select this one, press C, or I can select it here and press C. And, and again, with my mouse hovered on the object, I can press U, U, and there I have my objects unwrapped. And if I press P, boom, it automatically finds the best way for packing that. So as you see, lots of control, lots of things here for very complex UVs, but believe me, this is a great, great tool. I urge you to uh, look on that and uh, and see uh, if, 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 if you're doing heavy unwrap work, this is the tool for you actually. So now that let's say that I'm done with this unwrap, if I just close it and press yes, you see this tag here popped and it means that the object was uh, exported from Rhizome as an OBJ, automatically imported in C4D. So this bridge saved us a ton of time. So if I shift double click now in the tag to check, my UVs are, uh, are there perfect exactly as they came from Rhizome. So let's do the same process in Houdini now. So here I am, I have the torus and the group. And let's press, let's look for Rhizome. Oops, let's, it's a little bit off screen. There you go. So these are some uh, Rhizome uh, uh, tools that, that comes with the Labs installation. And when you install Houdini, there is also an option to install Labs and just check that. It has a ton of, of user-friendly nodes and some of them are a native bridge for Rhizome. Right, you don't have to find an external bridge. This, this, all of these nodes are a bridge to region with different functionalities. So I'm going to start with the most basic one, which is Labs uh, region UV unwrap, right? And by default, if I connect the torus here, right, 
Uh, I need to go to the advanced tab. And here where it's, it's looking for the resume location, the exe file, probably this is looking for another version. So my latest, latest version is here. So you just press here and look for your file in, in your set in your hard drive right once you link that the bridge is ready so if i enable the node it opens resume does this cut boom close it brings it back it's even faster than cinema 4d right this is fucking <laughs> amazing and whatever change i do here let's say enable leaf or whatever it does automatically all of this process i don't even know what enable leaf is i just you know whatever let me disable that and boom again does all of its magic right but um what if we want to do again uh what we did before feed our own sims well this is super super easy uh if if i do it like this and have the group nothing will happen it will just pop prism and do this thing again very quickly so um it has an option here which says auto cook and it means whatever sees up the chain Whatever change I do, it automatically auto cooks. So I'm gonna disable that and in order to do my operations. And I'm gonna change the method from pelt to custom, right? And now it, it asks for a sims group, really straightforward. And because I have one here from my group, the sims from before, uh, now it's ready to cut exactly at my thing, do the automatic packing and send everything. So from here, either I, I press cook or auto cook, whatever you want. So let's press cook and boom, bam, boom, pa, pa, pam, and ready. So you see how powerful this is, right? And if you want to do some extra relaxation here, let's do, uh, it has this optimized node. And this optimized node, I already set up my region path here. Uh, if I press it, it opens it, boom. So take a look before and after. Minor difference because um, the, opti the optimize didn't do much. The relaxation was already great. Uh, but just so you know, there is this tool right here as well. So this is this is how I work like back and forth with Rhizome. Uh, very simple. Uh, this is the native way. You can also do it this way. And again, you can just, uh, you know, visualize your UVs in a different, you see, if you want more scale in your UVs or whatever, this is again uh, how you do it. You can, you can keep using the Houdini native nodes. And another node you can use, uh, again from Rhizome, is, uh, let me take this torch right here, right? And let me drop this Rhizome uh, UV processor, right? This is a node that is made by a user. And I already have some things going on here. So let me disable, uh, reset to default, all of these things. And settings and this is this is how the node looks actually by default actually it looks it looks like this right so let's try um without doing anything let me plug the node to show you the whole process with this and why this is different than auto unwrap from reason reason uh, so if i enable it uh, nothing happens right so i need to go where it says here Rhizome location because it's looking for 2020 version and I have 2022. So uh, either I can go here to set program files. Uh, where is that? Rhizome lab, right? 2022. And look for the exe file. Right. And now it's linked, but again, it didn't do anything. Uh, I mean, you will be wondering what is the case here. So this node by default, if you press the cogwheel, has some presets here like box unwrap and uh, auto unwrap, etc. Let's try the box unwrap. So if I press that, it opens Rhizome, does a boop, 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 boop. Again, does this operation uh, based on those scripts now. And as you see from the settings, it dropped us here in the advanced tab, which all it did is it uh, used this script as a preset, right? And Let's try this one, uh, default unwrap, same as auto. Let's try this script now. It does a different cut. This script has changed. So again, you just play with, you don't care what it says here. You just play with the presets up here and does some operations. A very cool function though here is, and the difference with auto unwrap from Rhizome is 
what if you want to go inside and do some manual things right now okay um, it cannot use sims as far as I know but we can go in there and do very manual work and in order to do that if I scroll here a bit it has these things and it has auto quit this means that um, uh, it auto quits Rhizome so if I disable that it opens Rhizome unwraps the box and keeps me here and here I continue my work like maybe I don't want all this I can select and weld with W I weld and my object is back to its original mode so let's do another type of a cut here a cut here as before a cut here and here and press C and now I have everything cut and let's press uh, you, 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 everything. P for packing. I love that, let's say. And um, yeah, if I close it now, boom, now it brought it back. So you see that this thing is like a more go to rhizome and stay uh, kind of node, which can also be proof, uh, proof, proof, blah, blah, blah. it can prove really useful in some cases. So yeah that's about it and if you like for instance this thing with the auto quit uh disabled etc you just go here and say uh save as permanent defaults and every time you create this node it will it will be in the state so i have done this exactly thing so if i go here and labs processor i already have my rhizome uh, bridge in here I have a script that does welding and I have this uh, auto quit disabled so whenever I run this yeah it brings me my object in my default state in order for me to start unwrapping so um, yeah there it is these are the ways that I do unwrap in Houdini don't be afraid of Houdini as my friend Mark says and see you in the next one